Um, I guess I'll start big picture here with these comments about NATO, John Meacham, um, just as it pertains to, well, there is no precedent, is there? <laughs> No, no. The post-war, World War II, uh, the post-World War II order, uh, which actually, for all of its imperfections, maintained uh, a basic peace, uh, has maintained a basic peace, has tended to check the appetites, the ambitions, the designs of dictators, has, is under a threat from within. Uh, this is Abraham Lincoln's birthday, Mika, which I'm sure you'll be having a cake later uh, with, with uh, the, the great man about this. But Lincoln said early, early in 1837 that if America ever falls, it won't be because of a foreign force. It will be because of an internal enemy, an internal foe of the Constitution and the Declaration rising up. And that's what's happening. And it's very clear, and we can go on about it, but the question before the country could not be clearer. Do you want a president who defends the Constitution and, a, and an order that has proven successful creating American prosperity, creating American security, or do you want someone who is irrationally and for his own purposes trying to tear that down? And that's the you know, question we face. It will be framed again and again and again, but that, and this is just today's framing. Right. But, John Meacham, what I see um, happening, which, again, could be a real sort of uh, turning point in our history, is you don't just have people at these rallies, you know, cheering on these incredible statements, anti-democratic statements, to say the least. But now you've got the House bending to his will and impacting legislation that perhaps both parties and would have been very constructive at this point for our country and for our foreign policy, and Donald Trump is able to squash it, and it, it appears that cancer is now spreading into the Senate. It's a very interesting uh, analogy. Uh, the ancients used to talk about uh, the body politic because the, the health of the city, the health of the country was as important as one's own health. Corruption meant disease, not graft. Uh, crisis comes from the word in the course of a disease where a patient lives or dies. It is a disease. And we don't do ourselves any favors by pretending it's not and wanting to be kind to our, uh, you know, 401k Peter Millar wearing uh, Republican friends who are enabling this. There are right. not at this hour two functioning political constitutional parties. There just aren't. Mm -hmm. And you can argue about the left and say, oh, but what about, but what about? But there's nothing on the left that's not recognizable within the vernacular of American politics. What is clearly visible on the right, and you've just pinpointed it, is an illiberalism, and that sounds fancy, but an un-Americanism, right. if you want, that is removing them from that conversation. And so the only way to fix this I think, is to beat them, beat mm -hmm. them at the ballot box, and then, you know, they can react poorly and try to change the rules. But that's the way to do this, because all, as Lincoln said, all men act on incentive. The reason right. you saw okay. Senator Rubio and others out there is because right. they think that's going to help them. So you said beat them at the ballot box, and I'm going to put you in an awkward position because I know you have some ties to the Biden administration, helping with speech, write, speech writing at times. Um, no. But I, I think you can do this. Um, I'm curious how that happens in an environment right now where uh, the airwaves, whatever you called podcast airwaves, um, websites, publications are littered with disinformation. And uh, I know this was the case in the past, but I think it's at a new level where you have several networks, but primarily Fox News, and they're on a loop all day about Biden's age. They're on a loop all day about Biden talking about the Mexican president when he was talking about Egypt. You know, they're on a loop all day about that. And the loop on Trump, this is just a fact, it's not, you know, and it happens to, to play into our outlooks, but you could run Trump's gaffes and you wouldn't have enough time in our four hour show. 
and yet there's a totally different standard for both. So how do you beat them at their game? How do you vote them out when people are being fed a lot of bad information? The question is what people are taking that information and ingesting it, right? And by and large, it seems to me, you have a base of folks who have made a decision that mm -hmm. Trump is their heroic figure and they're going to follow him right. no matter what. Those are not, I hate to say this, uh, they're not reachable people, right? They've made a decision. Uh, and the only way they change their mind is if, 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 is if I think, if they lose. Uh, the people who are reachable are very few, right? They are probably not watching this conversation. Uh, it's probably mm -hmm. a couple of million people spread across seven states, uh, six or seven swing states. And so the story you tell them is the full story of what pr this choice is about. And mm -hmm. President Biden, uh, as you say, he's my friend. I help him when I can. There's no, no secret yep. about that. I think that he has proven himself again and again to be a hugely effective president. I have no anxieties about his capacity to make important decisions for the country. His political question is having me say that has virtually no effect. He's got to show it. You can't tell voters things. You have to show them. And so you, you tell a story. You have a president engaged in the life of the country in which his capacities, which are formidable, are on display. And those voters who are going to save us are these independent and swing voters. And when I say save us, I mean that. And I didn't think we'd be sitting here talking like this four or five years ago. But right. just as you say, just look at what Trump said yesterday and what he's going to keep saying. So the, yeah. the, the important thing to me is tell the story of what has made America great which is a devotion to the Constitution, to the Declaration, and to sanity.